Hello everybody and welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new here. My name is Jessica. Today I'm finally sitting down to film my Pandas Eyeshadows update. I've been dying to film this update but it just hasn't been able to happen. So here we are and I even put on a special little Pandas Eyeshadows eyeshadow look just for this video. I couldn't sit down with a boring eyeshadow look. I had to put on something interesting, something Pandas eyeshadowy. <laughs> I'm trying to make up words. Something that fits in with the eyeshadows that I'm currently panning. So I grabbed the colors that I've been working on this month and decided to create a fun little eye look for this video. So enjoy. I'm feeling really happy today. I'm in a really good mood and I'm just excited to update all of you on my progress this month. And I do have a couple eyeshadow looks to share with you and I'm gonna share how my pan percentage is doing after this update. So let's get right on to the video. But before we do, please take a moment to give this video a quick thumbs up and let the YouTube algorithm know how much you like it. And if you haven't already, you're new here, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. I would love to have you in my little YouTube community here. Let's jump right on into the video. Starting with the eyeshadow shade that's been in this project the longest, coming from my Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde Palette. I've been working on the shade Karma in here. So this is what Karma looks like in this, oh, wrong hand. <laughs> We're gonna get there. So this is what Karma looks like in the swatch. It's kind of like a pinky, corally toned mid-brown. That is how it appears on the eye. It does look more pink in the swatch, but on the eye, it really blends out to be more of like a mid-tone brown shade. So here's what the shade was looking like in June when I first brought it into this project. During the first month, I reached for it seven times and it was looking like this. I reached for it 10 additional times in the second month, making for 17 uses. And here's what it was looking like last month. And in the past month, I was able to reach for it the additional 13 times. And here's what that shade is looking like today. And you'll see that there is a slight dip happening on Karma and I really had to work my butt off just to see this dip. 30 uses is not a small amount, but I still do not have a pan. However, I have reached my minimum requirements for these eyeshadows. For my project, I like to keep them in my project until I hit pan or I have them in for at least three months of use and 30 uses. So I try and hit both of those parameters before I roll a shade out if I don't hit pan on it during the time it's in the project. So I'm gonna roll this one out even though it doesn't have a pan. I'm really happy with the progress I was able to make on it. I'm disappointed that we didn't get a pan on it but I just know that it would take me a lot more uses to get there and I really wanna work on other things in this project for now. So I'm sad I don't have a pan but I'm happy that I had this palette out. It was really fun to reach for. I had fun with some other shades in here as well. I reached into Galaxy a few times Times. I definitely reached for Supernova. I think I reached into Glitch once or twice. And I also reached into Haze and some of these purples and greens up here as well. I definitely reached for that shade as well. And I also reached for Utopia. So I really got a lot of love on this palette while I was in this project. So it's not a complete failure. I got my 30 uses and it's going back into my collection knowing that it got some good love on it this year. Next shade is this gorgeous shimmery sage green right here. This is El Malacan, which comes to us from the Reina del Caribe palette. So here's what El Malacan was looking like if I have the footage. I think I lost the footage, but I may have found it. If I have it, I'll insert it here. This is what it looked like in June when I first rolled it in. It didn't have a lot of use on it. Here's what it was looking like in July after four uses. And during the month of July, I was able to reach for it eight additional times, making for 12 uses total. Here's what it was looking like last month after those 12 uses. And during the past month, I was only able to reach for it eight times more. So I've now used it 20 times total. And here's what it's looking like today. And there is a nice little dip forming in El Malacan, but the pans in here are very, very deep. I have a ways to go before I even get close to hitting pan. This is how deep it is over here. You can see on La Costa, if you can really appreciate how deep it is, I don't know, but these are some of the deepest pans that I've ever experienced. I've now had the shade in the project for three months, but I haven't hit that 30 use goal. So I'm gonna keep it in for one additional month. I'm gonna try and hit those 10 more uses during this month. That might be hard for me to do. It's definitely not the easiest shade to reach for on a regular basis. I can definitely make it more neutral for a more day-to-day -day eye look, but I've been spreading my love around many, many different eyeshadows and many eyeshadow projects. So it hasn't gotten the devoted use that it needs in order to, for me to reach that goal. But I'm really gonna push for hitting that goal by next month and try and get those 10 more uses. And if I get a pan in that time, that would be amazing. We will see. I'm not super hopeful about that but I'm really glad just to have this palette out. I love this shade. It's always been my favorite shade in the palette and I'm happy that I'm giving it the love and attention that it deserves because I love it so much. I want to use it. So yeah, I'm really happy this one came into the project and that one is gonna stay in one more month, hopefully just one more month. 
Next shade is Droid Protocol. It's this very deep, dark, chocolatey brown shade, and that is from the Star Wars Mandalorian The Child palette, and it's the cutest palette in the galaxy. It even says so in the packaging. <laughs> so I love this palette, and even though I didn't roll in the most exciting shade from this palette, I have still loved having this one around. So here's what Droid Protocol was looking like when I first rolled it in in July. I was able to reach for it 20 times during the first month. Here's what it was looking like last month after those 20 uses. Had a nice little dip going on there. And during the past month, I reached for an additional 20 times, making for 40 uses total. And here's what Droid Protocol is looking like today. And you can see that I have a nice little teeny tiny baby pan in there. And I was easily able to hit pan on this because I was reaching for this shade almost every single day as a way to set my cream eyeliner on my upper lid. So that worked really well. If I'm using a pencil eyeliner, I really like to use a dark shadow like this to set it down. It really helps it to last all day and not smudge around my eye. And this worked beautifully for that. I tried to use it here and there and eyeshadow looks to deepen up, but I don't wear very deep looks very often. So mostly using it as that liner and that is how I was able to hit that pan. I actually hit pan on the 38th use, but I went ahead and reached for it two more times just to get a little bit more of a satisfying pan to share with all of you. So you can see I used the one next to it, float your crib in a very similar way because their pans are almost identical. So that one's gonna roll out and I wish I'd gotten more love on this palette while I was out in this project, but I really did just hone in on Droid Protocol. Like I said, I was quite distracted with many other things. I may have reached into like sipping soup for a green look at one point and maybe the green highlight, but that's like a vague memory in my brain somewhere. So maybe it happened, maybe it didn't, okay. I can't tell you, but that one is going to roll out and I'm so excited to have two rollouts for this month. That's awesome. Next, we have this beautiful milky sherbet orange color. This is Twinkle Twinkle and it comes from my Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams palette. And I have so enjoyed having this palette around. I'm so happy I brought this palette into my collection. It was kind of an impulse purchase, but it does feel such a niche in what I want in my eyeshadow collection. So I had so much fun creating this look with this palette today. I have Twinkle Twinkle all throughout the crease. And then I also used the pastel shimmery blue in the inner part of my lower lash line. And I also used the kind of matching peach shape, the shimmery peach, peach for the stars on the lid um, mixed in with another blue. So I'll tell more about the blue next, but first let's talk about Twinkle Twinkle. So here's what Twinkle Twinkle was looking like when I first rolled it in. I think that was back in July. I was able to reach for it 11 times during that first month. Here's what it was looking like. And during the past month, I was able to reach for it 12 additional times, making for 23 uses total. And here's what Twinkle Twinkle's looking like today. And after those 23 uses, there is a small dip showing there, but nothing very dramatic or exciting. I have seven more uses on this before I hit my three month 30 use goal. I highly doubt I will hit pan in those seven uses, but I'm going to have fun playing with this. During that time, I can really make this work for neutral looks very easily. Mixing it in with a mid-tone brown just makes it a little bit softer and a little bit more of an orangey mid-tone brown, and that's super easy for me to get a use on it that way. But I want to have fun playing with it and doing colorful looks like this in some of those seven uses as well. So hopefully I'll have some fun looks for you in my next update, not only using Twinkle Twinkle, but all the fun pastels in here, kind of like what I was able to do today. So I'm really happy with this look. I kind of just threw it together and had fun playing and I just wanted to kind of experiment for this video. So I'm happy with how it came out, even though it's just kind of like rushed and random you can still kind of have a little self-expression just squeeze into the end of your day. Here it is, 5.30. I probably should be making dinner, but instead I'm playing with makeup and filming makeup videos for you. You know, I'm calling it self-care. And the last shade that I've been working on is the blue that's in this eye look or one of the blues that's on the outer corner of my eye. It's a beautiful single from ColourPop, one of their super shock shadows. This is the shade Coconut. And Coconut is a very, very beautiful blue. It's one of my favorite blues in my collection. And I'm so happy this came into my project because my singles have been very neglected recently. So here's what Coconut was looking like last month. It already had a nice little teeny tiny dip going on it. During the past month, I was only able to reach for it two times, which is kind of pathetic, but here's what Coconut is looking like today. And 
Maybe you'll see a little bit of a difference after those two uses, but probably not a lot. My second use was this eye look I created today. So that was another reason I wanted to create an eye look because I had to have another use on this eyeshadow. I couldn't have just one use for an update. That would be so lame of me. And I don't like to disappoint my viewers out there. Not that I'm like stressed about any of this. It's all just for fun, but it's just kind of an excuse for me to play with makeup and kind of unwind after a hard day's work and have a little me time and just enjoy one of my hobbies. So those are all of my five shades. To recap, I have two eyeshadow shades rolling out this month. I have Karma from Huda Beauty and then Droid Protocol from the Child Palette. So these two right here. And then El Malacana staying in for a fourth month. Hopefully we can get 10 more uses on that one. Twinkle Twinkle has seven more uses and one more month to go. And Coconut has a road to go. But many of you know that super shock shadows are not the hardest to hit pan on. I'm definitely not digging into it. I'm not trying to like rush through it. I just want to enjoy this blue while it's here. Um, even though you know blues have been hanging around a lot recently. This entire year has been the year of blue, but I don't hate it. I love a blue look and it's just so fun to wear one. I love a pop of blue. Who doesn't? <laughs> so that means I'm going to roll in two new eyeshadow shades this month, which is always the most fun part. But first, let's talk about some of the eyeshadow looks I created using these five shades during the month of August and some of September. So I only have a couple eyeshadow looks to share. I apologize again. I'm trying to be better about taking photos, but I just haven't been feeling very inspired lately. And again, a lot of my looks have been just super neutral and fast and not very exciting to photograph. So my apologies, but I will share the few photos that I have that feature at least some of the colors that we're talking about here. So this is one of my very neutral go-to examples. I've probably shared this look in multiple videos in the past couple months, but it's a way of me sharing out El Malacan all over the lid. And then I think I reached for a droid protocol call you can definitely see it on my lash line but I also I think used it in the outer part of my crease and blended that out just to add some depth to this look very very basic look okay this look mostly is featuring shades from my pen that palette which I'll link that series up here if you aren't watching it but I also definitely have karma in this look in my crease and Karma was in a lot of looks and a lot of creases, but it's not very exciting and you can't really you know it doesn't necessarily stand out amongst other shades but it's there and that's the look, so thank you for looking at it. This is a very peach shade that I created using Twinkle Twinkle and then Peach for the Stars, the shade next to it. So I just wanted to embrace the peach for a day. I just buffed Twinkle Twinkle all over the lid, all up into the crease, and then topped the lid with Peach for the Stars. Simple, easy, fast, paired it with a red lip, and boom. This next look was the one and only time that I used coconut last month. I think I also reached for the shimmer shade in the Huda Beauty Mercury Retrograde palette for this look. And then coconut, I think, is layered with gunmetal from my Panos palette series as well. So it's mixed in with more gray blues. So it kind of toned down that bright blue a little bit. But I really, really liked this look. I thought it was really pretty and I photographed it a lot. So I might be including more than one photo here. And this is the last look I had to share with you. Again, I am using El Malacan on the inner part of the lid. And then I used a like bronzy brown shade from my Pan That palette on the outer part of the lid. And I thought it was really, really pretty. I wore this look with the chartreuse dress. So that pop of green in the eye I paired really well with it and I felt really nice that day. So those are all my eyeshadow looks. Again, I'll try and be better next month, but it's been really busy, you know, getting back into the swing of getting back to school and just like having time to do everything and just you know, makeup's not necessarily the first thing on my list and obviously it shouldn't be. It's just like fun for me to play with and I don't know, I don't need to explain this. Let's talk about pan percentage. So my completely arbitrary goal for this year is to hit a pan percentage of 20%. And that means that of my 466 eyeshadows, I want to have a pan in 20% of them. So in the beginning of the year, I started with a pan percentage of 12.02%. Last month, I was so close to my goal. My pan percentage was 19.96%. And during the past month, I did hit three new pans. So one pan in Droid Protocol from this project and then a pan from my Pan That Palette series, and then another pan from my Project Level Up series. So with those three new pans, I now have pan in 96 out of my 466 eyeshadow shades, bringing my pan percentage to 20.6%. Yay! So I have hit my goal. I've exceeded my goal. I've gone past 20%. 
and I'm feeling pretty happy about that, I must say. And I'm just excited to see how far I can go before this year is up. I thought I might be able to hit 20%, but I think that's not really very feasible. That would mean I would have to hit pan in, I think, about 10 more shades, which would be hard to do in three months. We'll see. You never know. I'm not going to hold my breath, but I'm just excited to see how far I'm able to get before this year is up. We still have a solid three more months to go through this project. I'm going to take a break in December because Lord knows I need it, but who knows what can happen in three months. So now, finally, the time has come. I get to bring in two new eyeshadows into this project. So I'm gonna pull up my Tiny Decisions app. I'm gonna randomly select a eyeshadow palette, and then I'm gonna select a shade from that eyeshadow palette. So we'll just go one by one here. So I have all my palettes and my Z palette and singles in this wheel, and I have one little wedge blacked out because I'm currently working on it in a different project, so I don't wanna bring it in for another project. So let's see which palette's coming in first. Aha, uh -huh. aren't you cheeky? The Give Me Glow Pastel Dreams. Well, sure. I was just saying how much I wanted to hang out with it, right? So why not? It's still eligible. So I don't have to reach too far for that one. And you know, it's kind of nice that I get a repeat palette because that's just one less palette that I have to reach for on a regular basis and one less palette on my vanity that I have to think about. So having two shades in one palette is kind of fun. So here's the palette today. There's 12 shades in there. One of them, Peach for the Stars, already has pan in it. So that means I'm going to put in the numbers one through 11 into my little number generator here because 11 of the 12 shades are eligible. So I got one through 11 there. Do, 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 do. I guess I should have put in one through 10 since the other one's not really eligible, but whatever. We didn't get that number. Ooh, you're never going to guess. You're never going to guess. Okay, guess. You already guessed it, right? It's the blue shade. Yep, you knew. It's the blue shade. It's the blue shimmery. One, two, three. It's called Pika Blue. Isn't that cute? So I guess my eye look today kind of manifested the shade. It was like, you enjoyed this shade so much, which I really did. When I was putting it on, I was like, oh my goodness. It's so pretty. And it just applied so beautifully. There wasn't any fallout. It was so impactful. It blended out gorgeously. And because I loved it so much, the universe decided to give it to me in my project. Thank you. Thank you, universe. Someone's looking out for me. And blues just can't escape me. So here we have another blue. Peek a blue. Let me swatch it for you. It's so gorgeous. It's so stinking gorgeous. It's definitely one of my favorite shades in the palette. Look at it. So reflective. So beautiful. I'm going to really enjoy painting this, but it's going to be a little bit of a challenge. I'm going to have to find some creative ways to use it. I have been finding ways to make blues more neutral. It's possible. It's possible. Pairing it with a brown, actually, you wouldn't always think that a blue and a brown would look pretty together, but I really, really enjoy pairing them together and kind of shearing out the blues into the browns. It makes it quite wearable. As much as I love this blue shade, this purple shade in here is very disappointing. It has like a gold shift, which when you swatch it, gives it almost more of like a orange look. It like doesn't look very purple in swatch. I just have to talk about this real quick because it bothers me. So yeah, there's that lavender. And like, it looks pretty in some lights, like, like that, you can really see the purple. But when the light hits it straight on, it has a gold orangey shift. And it bothers me because it doesn't look very purple on the eye. But we're not talking about the purple. We're talking about the blue. So I'm gonna enjoy the blue. And that's gonna be a fun little addition. And how fun will that be to pair it with coconut? It's a match made in heaven. I did it today. I'm gonna do it again. All right, so let's bring in that next palette because I'm dying in front of these lights and I want to get this video filmed. All right, let's go. Do, 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 do. Oh, the Huda Beauty Rose Quartz. So we're swapping out one Huda Beauty for another, but I love that palette. It's so pretty and I think it'll be really nice for fall. So let me grab that one real quick. So here is my Huda Beauty Rose Quartz palette. This packaging on this one, they did it right. It's so gorgeous. So here is what that palette is looking like right now. I have had one of these shades in here in this project, Radiate, before. Yes, I used that shade 30 times. I did. Believe it or not. Was it Radiate? Yeah, it was definitely Radiate. You can hardly tell I used it at all. So again, not super hopeful about hitting pan in this palette, but maybe with a shimmer, it could be possible. And I just love these mauve tones. I think they'll be beautiful for the fall, beautiful for the winter months as well. And I'm just excited to have this one out and play with it. The iridescent like duochrome shades in here are gorgeous as well. And I'm just happy to know her. So let's go ahead and select a shade. All 18 shades in here are eligible. So I'm going to put in the numbers 1 through 18. Okay, I've got 1 through 18 up there. 
Let's see. Number two. Number two. I don't even remember which one that could be. Oh, Aura. Okay, I rolled an Aura. It's like a very deep, almost like warm brown. Let's watch it real quick. I think I might re-roll. Yeah, so there's Aura right there. It's very similar to a shade in my Pan That Palette series, and I am really going for the gold in Pan That Palette. I want to devote as much attention as possible to the brown shade in that palette that's so similar. I'll show it to you. It's this one, Stylin. So Stylin next to Aura. They're different enough in the swatch, but I know on the eye they would be so similar, and I just want something a little more interesting, especially since I am really trying to focus all my brown focus onto the Pan That Palette. So I'm going to regenerate another number. Don't hate me. Number 10. Okay, let's see what that is. Cherished. It's kind of a boring shade too. All right, um, I don't know. I'm like not feeling it. <laughs> I guess I should just go with it. So I swatched out Cherished with the rest of my color palette and it is a very pastel pink, very light colored. I don't know how pink it will look on the eye, but I'm just gonna go with it because I really need another matte in this color palette and I really like how these all look together and I think that it'll be really easy for me to reach for Cherished and I, I need an easy shade. <laughs> Looking at all these other bright colors, I need an easy shade in this lineup. So that is my color palette for the upcoming month. I actually am quite excited for it. I think it'll be a lot of fun. It will be a challenge, but that's what this project is all about. A way to challenge myself and have fun with eyeshadows, have fun with makeup, and just enjoy the collection that I already have. I really hope you enjoyed this video today. I really enjoyed making it for you. I think that we have a really fun color story going forward. I'm kind of going to miss this color story a little bit, but this one's going to have some fun too. And I think maybe could create a fun look using all of these shades together. So thank you for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, don't forget to give it a quick thumbs up before you leave. And if you are here till the very end, maybe leave an emoji that this color story inspires you to leave. I don't know, maybe... I'm not going to give you any hints. Whatever this color story reminds you of, leave the emoji in the comments below. I love you so much for being here. I hope you're doing really well wherever you are in the world, and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Until then, bye!